A sea breeze is an onshore breeze which develops around the coastlines of sea and even large lakes on warm days. In mid-latitudes, it commonly occurs during the spring and summer. This is when there is a large temperature difference between the sea and adjacent land areas. A sea breeze is a thermally driven circulation, forming due to the fact that the land heats up more quickly than the sea. Water has a higher specific heat capacity and so requires more energy to raise the temperature. As the sun radiates energy at more or less a constant rate, it will take longer for the water to heat up. This means that peak sea surface temperatures aren't reached until early autumn. This differential heating of adjacent land and sea surfaces is the main factor in the formation of sea breezes. A temperature difference of around 3 degrees Celsius is required for a sea breeze to start to develop. Other factors that are required for sea breezes to form are light offshore winds at around 3,000 feet. This aids the higher level flow out to sea to get the process started. To describe how a sea breeze forms, let's first imagine two columns of air. One over the land and one over the sea. At first, they have the same temperature, volume and mass. So the surface pressure over the land and sea is the same. As the land surface temperature rises during the day, this heats the air above it by convection. The warming air expands and becomes less dense, rising upwards in the column. At this point, the mass of air in the land column hasn't changed. As pressure is the weight of air in a column, this means that surface pressure also remains the same. The air has just been redistributed upwards, changing the pressure at higher levels in the column. In the air column over the land, as the air is warm and therefore less dense, pressure decreases less quickly with height. In contrast, in the cooler, denser air column over the sea, pressure falls more quickly with height. This means that at the same height, pressure is lower in the air column over the sea. This sets up a pressure gradient between the two air columns. As air flows from high to low pressure, the offshore flow aloft strengthens. Convergence takes place in the column over the sea as the air in that column is not moving. Surface pressure in this column now increases as it has gained mass. So now we have higher pressure over the sea surface and lower pressure over the land surface. Convergence aloft causes air to descend in the lower layers, which then diverges at the surface. This diverging air, combined with the pressure gradient between the land and the sea, is enough to get air moving onshore at the surface. This onshore component is what we experience as the sea breeze. And this is part of the larger sea breeze circulation. Sea breezes can be disrupted or prevented by strong winds as the turbulence mixes out the differential heating. Any significant flow parallel to the coast can also disrupt the formation of the circulation, as can decreases in the land temperature due to precipitation. Also, the air cannot be too stable as it will not want to lift over the land. Where the incoming cool sea air meets the warmer land air, a convergent zone known as a sea breeze front can occur. These opposing winds force the air upwards where it cools and can condense to form clouds. Thunderstorms can also form due to the uplift on the sea breeze front. The sea breeze front acts very much like a shallow cold front. With temperature decreases, clearing skies and wind changes after the front has gone through. This means that generally coasts are sunnier than inland. However, sea breezes can also bring in offshore low cloud and sea fog to spoil a sunny day on the coast. A slow moving or stationary sea breeze front, which remains close to the coast, occurs due to frictional convergence. When wind flows over the land, the rougher surface causes it to slow down more than that flowing over the smooth sea. It also turns in an anti-clockwise direction in the Northern Hemisphere, known as backing. This occurs along the east coast of the UK in a northerly wind flow, and along the south coast in an easterly flow. The extra convergence enhances the uplift on the sea breeze front, causing more shower activity and possibly thunderstorms. 
a sea breeze front will extend further inland where there is frictional divergence along the coast. This occurs along the east coast of the UK in a southerly wind flow and along the south coast in a westerly flow. The flatter topography of southern and eastern parts of the UK also allows for the sea breeze to extend further inland as hills and mountains will provide a barrier to the flow. The shape of the coastline can influence how separate sea breezes interact. Inlets or coves, due to their concave shape, encourage diverging sea breezes, and so remain relatively cloud-free in these scenarios. Whereas headlands and peninsulas are particularly susceptible to enhanced convergence of sea breezes, and the showers and thunderstorms that this colliding air brings. Storms formed through the collision of sea breezes can occur with such regularity that they are expected. Nearly every afternoon from September to March, a storm forms across the Tiwi Islands in the Northern Territory of Australia. This storm is so reliable, it even has its own name, Hector, or Hector the Convector. Reaching heights of approximately 66,000 feet, it was named by pilots during the Second World War as the storm's recurring position and height acted as a navigational beacon. Hector's consistency and intensity are the result of several sea breezes that form and, due to the island's topography, collide, helping to trigger regular thunderstorms. The sea breeze is generally a small-scale flow and is a good example of an antitrictic wind. This is a type of balanced flow where the pressure gradient force, which acts from high to low pressure, is balanced by friction alone. Initially, the sea breeze blows down the pressure gradients, but as the strength of the sea breeze increases, it is acted upon by the Coriolis force. This is an apparent force as a result of the Earth's rotation. In the Northern Hemisphere, it gradually turns the onshore flow to the right during the afternoon. At night, the sea breeze usually changes to a land breeze. The land cools much more quickly and so the process reverses, resulting in a flow from the land to the sea. While sea breezes are usually small in scale, the same formation process is involved in the setup of something much larger. A monsoon is a major wind system that is simply the result of the differential heating of land and sea. Monsoonal climates are characterised by a dramatic seasonal change in the direction of the prevailing winds over a region which brings a marked change in rainfall and leads to distinct and often predictable wet and dry seasons.